Hi, my name is Marius Hopper. I'm a respiratory physician from Hanover Medical School in Hanover, Germany. I've been taking care of patients with pulmonary hypertension for more than 30 years now and I'm very excited to have a chance now to present for the first time the data from the STELLA study with Sotatosat. The, the background of this STELLA study is quite complicated, but what we've learned over the past couple of years is that pulmonary arterial hypertension is a disease caused by remodeling of the small pulmonary arteries. And this remodeling is due to a disbalance between anti-proliferative and proliferative um, signaling pathways. And among the um, proliferative signaling pathways, active in signaling plays an important role. So Tartacept is a first-in-class activin signaling inhibitor. It's a fusion protein composed by the FC domain of human immunoglobulin G, which is bound to the extracellular domain of human activin type 2A receptor. It acts as a ligand trap for activins and other ligands of the transforming growth factor beta superfamily and is believed to restore the balance between the anti-proliferative and proliferative signaling. And the concept behind this is that it probably does not only delay disease progression, but by really bringing cells that occlude the lumen of the pulmonary vessels, endothelial cells, muscle cells, cells into apoptosis, it seems to have a, um, the, the possibility of reopening these vessels, at least to some extent, so to achieve reverse remodeling. So STELLA was a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled study that enrolled patients with pulmonary arterial hypertension who were in functional class 2 or 3, despite receiving background therapy with approved PAH medications. So the patients were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to receive either placebo or sotatacept, administered subcutaneously every three weeks. The primary endpoint of the STELLA study was changed from baseline at week 24 and 6 minute walk distance. In addition to that, the study had nine secondary endpoints tested hierarchically also at week 24, except from the time to death or clinical worsening, which was assessed at the cutoff date, which was when the last patient completed the week 24 visit. The key findings of this study were, first of all, that the primary endpoint was met. So the change in six-minute walk distance, the difference here between placebo and sotatacept was about 40 meters. And of course, this was highly statistically significant. In addition to that, the study met eight out, out of the nine pre-specified um, secondary endpoints, including multi-component improvement, which was a composite endpoint of predefined improvements in functional class six-minute walk distance anti P. In addition to that, there were improvements in hemodynamics, especially the pulmonary vascular resistance, but also the mean PA pressure in BNP, in risk scores, and importantly, in the PAH SYMPACT tool, which is a disease-specific quality of life score. We have seen adverse events and side effects in the study as in all studies. And um, the overall number of adverse events was the same in, in both groups. Adverse events related to treatment were more common with sotartacep, whereas serious or severe adverse events or adverse events leading to drug discontinuation were more common in the placebo group. What we saw as adverse events related to sotartacep were mostly um, bleeding episodes, especially minor or mild epistaxis and gum bleeds. We also saw tail anctitasia, which are small vasodilations on, on the skin, which um, we saw in about 14% of the patients at the cutoff date. In addition to that, there were slight increases in hemoglobins, which were expected, mild thrombocytopenia, some dizziness, and some, some hypertension. I think the study and the findings are going to have substantial clinical implications on how we treat patients with pulmonary hypertension in the future. I think that the currently available treatments will, are not going to go away and I believe that especially the combination of um, oral drugs and the thin receptor antagonist and PDE5 inhibitors will continue to be the backbone of PIH treatment. But after that I assume that most physicians um, will start sotatacept early on in, in the course of the disease to just achieve what we have seen in the STELLA study and I also believe that patients will ask for that. The findings of STELLA open the door to further research, which is really necessary. I mean, it's, it's of course other compounds that will be explored, but also here with sort of to say, I think the, the long-term efficacy is quite important. We have two ongoing phase 
three studies. One is called Thenis, which involves patients who have very advanced disease. The other is called Hyperion, which involves patients who have newly diagnosed disease. And especially this one is, is to me of utmost importance because the results that we saw in Stella were achieved in patients in whom the interval between the time of initial PH diagnosis and Rome in the study had been about nine years. So, I mean, it's, it's at least possible that if we give this compound very early during the course of the disease, that we may even achieve more than what we've seen in Stella. And to me, this is one of the key questions for the years to come.